Here we go. Let's. I want to try out that thing I got on eBay. I actually bought this over a year ago, but I got me a kit here in the toolbox. It's got some medium heavy duty stuff in it and um, transmission selector for Allison MD3060 PCM. It stays in the bus here in case I'm on the road and these things take a crap. I also got a spare PCM for it. But anyway, I got that little blue box. It's supposed to be an XIQ clone. They try to sell it to you and pretend that it's the real deal. But the real deal don't come with all the pirated software for one. And you also don't put the sticker on yourself. But See, look here. It even comes with the stickers that you put on there yourself. So, peel the backing off of that. And I'm going to go ahead and stick this on there now that I've took this unit apart to show you what the innards look like. I'll stick that on there so it looks like the officially licensed, unlicensed product. There we go. Now looky there. On the front with the three little lights we got another one all right hopefully i get this lined up right i don't know probably not though not very good at putting stickers on yeah looks like it's lining up There, now it looks like the real thing, right? <laughs> so, let's take this out here and see if we can make this connect up to an international RE300 with a T440E and an Allison MD3060. So let's boot up the laptop. If you look on these cables, it's got a little like notch right there to tell you which way to go with it. Yeah, it felt that, huh? I actually have never done this before. This is the first time. And I guess, uh, just because I got a power light on there, that means jack. I need to go get the keys real quick. But I'm pretty sure a year ago I installed that software on here already. Alright, I got some keys. Let's load up Service Max. That's actually free on International's website, so that's not pirated, so in this video I'm not even showing pirated software. Even though, I ain't got no problem with pirated software. But I'm waiting on it to load up on here, it may not. It's trying. I see four cable no longer supported. I don't even know what they're talking about. Oh, it's doing something. Data lights on. And that count there's are going up. So what's it doing? It says it's running tests, I guess. It's getting 35 degrees out here. Oil pressure two pounds. I think the batteries are a little ch more charged than that because up yonder is reporting over 12 and a half. Hey, looky there. Rated power 230 horsepower. I thought this was a 210. I thought that's all it went up to was 210. Total miles 93,073. Total fuel used 19,848 gallons and 10,000 hours of engine run time y'all so i guess it does work like right out of the box it works 
<laughs> I'm shocked. Um, wow. So let's see if it'll start. I doubt it because it needs glow plugs. Yeah, it started clicking away, didn't it? See if we can find something that shows RPM on it and see if it's still logging that. Two hundred and thirty horsepower. Engine rated RPM twenty four fourteen. <laughs> I'm sorry, my head hurts. I can't see it. If y'all can, just yell. So can you change these variables? See if it does anything like it now to see the transmission shaft speed. <laughs> See that voltage dip down to eight volts of it. Oh, I shouldn't have turned it off. Crap. Turned it back on. Now it's searching. Okay, I got it. So I'm trying to click on the DTC codes down here and I don't understand what I'm not seeing. Like I said, I ain't used it before, so don't get mad at me. I'm not actually showing you how to use it. I was just actually reviewing this product year after buying, and I got able to complain about it or nothing now. So I'm just kind of curious. Because I bought it in case I broke down the side of the road or if I worked on another truck and needed the travel codes off of it, I just haven't needed it yet. I still don't need it today. I just come out here to try it. Yeah, key on engine run off. Let's do an injector test. So is it going to? Okay. That hit the wrong one. No, I hit the right one. Ah. Okay, let's try one of these tests here. Key on engine off. Standard test. See what that does for it. Okay, I guess that was good. Let's see if he'll do an injector buzz test. Well, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, all of them. Oh, quit doing it over and over and over. You're going to make it mad. <laughs> nah, for real, when it buzzes all eight at one time, that's hard on the injector driver module. <clears throat> I don't understand what they're doing. I'm going to have to get, do some reading. I've done zero, zero, zero reading or looking about this. I know nothing about it. Okay, let's try it one more time. 
Yeah, it did. It act, it did actually give readings up here, so it is live and working. <laughs> I'm going to charge the battery now because I know that there's nothing wrong with it. The pro, I'm sorry. I feel good today. But anyway, I know there's nothing wrong with the cheap NextQ uh, knockoff thing I bought here off the eBay system. You know, I may just leave. I might try it while it's running to have a sniff at it too. But anyway, I'm going to charge the batteries on this and let the block heater do its job for a few minutes. And I'm going to start this and then have a look at it. Alright, so for this video, I'm going to just make it from inside the bus. Uh, got the thing hooked up right there. And on a bus or medium duty truck, you're going to find it either here or over here under the dash. So. Let's turn it on. Great. I have to listen to that stupid thing. Anyway, it started populating all that crap. So let's go to on engine running standard test and see if it tells me to start it. I don't see nothing about it. So I'll start it. Maybe. Oh, I ain't got no power to go to that. Okay, I have ran the block heater for about an hour and a half or so. This one too. Sorry, right the cannot detect engine. What's a snot trough? It's that one right there, I think. Well, I know it's a 2004, so. Says test completed. So it's giving graphs for the H pop and the the demand from the ICP. This is ICP desired six hundred and thirty five. And it's getting 670. So that probably is about close to right. Let's see if we can get it up to a grand. And It is below, but a little bit below. Let's give it some more go. So, the gauge says a thousand. The computer saying maybe 950. It is still going below the 10 a little bit. Let's give it just a little more. And there's a thousand and twenty-nine. It's pretty close to what the computer reports. Within a hundred pounds, I guess I'd say. And it says engine coolant temperature 84 degrees. 
low pressure 46 pounds engine oil temp 68 degrees and there's the rev it says a thousand at the gauge so that's pretty close <laughs> fuel rate 1.3 gallons an hour at that it says 45 degrees and there it's sucking in so let's go up here to the other tests This is with the engine running. Here's an injector test. I wonder what that does. Coolant must be over 160 degrees. During this test, the ECM will control fuel delivery and determine each cylinder's power contribution. If a cylinder is found not performing satisfactorily, a diagnostic trouble code may be set. This is engine against this cylinder one and performs sequentially. So let's see, can't do that test right now. It's a continuous monitor test too. Not just where it logs everything so I can look at it later. treble codes. I'm really gonna have to look at this more and try to learn all of what it does and how to do it. Okay here we go we got there's some treble codes. Uh, those all say inactive. So there is no real trouble codes then. So let's clear those. And refresh. I wonder if it'll show me the same crap again. I don't see any. That's cool, I thought my bus was only 210 horse, we got an extra 20 horses hiding away in there. <laughs> I doubt it really feels any different to drive, really. To find out that this little box from China, that's like three or four hundred dollars, it was nice to find that this wasn't a waste of money that I bought a year ago. Uh, it's working great, I just need to learn how to use it. <laughs> So with that being said, I got some of the uh, Allison software on here too. Uh, stick around, I'm gonna figure out how to get into the transmissions TCM and figure out how to unlock six gear because most of y'all know that have buses, when you put it in drive, it gives you fifth gear up to fifth gear, but you've really got a six speed transmission. So the software's locking you out of the higher range. It really has two overdrive gears on it. So anyway, I'll make some other videos of this once I actually got this figured out. The whole gist of this was is uh, for the people, especially in the schooly community, uh, if you really need to hook up to your bus computer, this is probably going to be your best cheap option. It's one of these Nex IQ boxes. Um, Service Max Pro, it's actually free on international site, so there's no cost in that. There's just, you know, you're going to pay for the adapter. And I don't know what your Mac users are going to do. I guess you're just going to have to do without because this is just for PC. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching this video. I'm going to post some more about how to use uh, Service Max and also that CAN bus translator or adapter, whatever you want to call that. 
So, just stick around. Also check out the other videos I have on the playlist. I got some even better self-help videos. Uh, what the world's deceived with into Satanism. Uh, most people are devil worshippers and don't even realize it. Check out sharingthetruthandlove.com. There's a lot of articles there. There's also a salvation tab that shows you with the Bible how that a person that's lost can be born again in the knowledge and truth of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's not about repenting and giving up a few bad habits or whatever. Uh, it's, a, it's a complete renewing of your mind and your heart. Appreciate your time and I love y'all. May the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ richly bless you and your families. Y'all take care.